How are we? And welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to discuss Quade Cooper and uh, his incredible comeback performance in the past uh, Wallabies vs Springboks game. They won the game 28 points to 26 uh, by way of Quade Cooper's boot. Now Quade Cooper is a player that I've always loved. I've always loved him. Ever since he came out, burst on the scene with the Queensland Reds um, and, and gave a wee shake and bake, um, gave a wee shimmy. Taught me how to sidestep properly, right? So Quake Cooper in 2011 hit my TV screen and ever since then I've been a massive, massive fan. In 2016, I decided to start making rugby tutorial videos and I decided to, to make a video titled <laughs> How to Sidestep Like the Pros. And it went bloody well. And there's one guy that I actually quoted in that video the professional rugby player that I was actually trying to model my step after, and it was Quade Cooper. So that was 2016. 2017, Quade Cooper played his last test for Australia against Italy. He was exiled, in a way. Uh, previous Wallabies coach, Michael Checker, I don't know, had a bit of a chip on his shoulder, in my opinion. Didn't want to bring Quade Cooper back in, whatever he did. So Cooper, you know, could have shied away from the game. He was probably about 29 years of age at the time. But he decided, no, you know what, I, I back myself, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go away and I'm going to grind. I'm going to fucking grind and that's exactly what he's done. He's grinded away, he's kept his body in amazing shape. He is the epitome of a professional athlete. And actually that comes back to uh, his influence from uh, Sonny Bill Williams, who is another incredible professional athlete with an emphasis on professional. So Quay Cooper goes about his business, plays for the Melbourne Rebels in the Super Rugby, goes over to Japan, uh, plays a couple of years in Japan, and whilst away in Japan, the Wallabies get a new coach. Fantastic. His name's Dave Rennie. He is a New Zealander. And, uh, well, lo and behold, a new coaching staff, a couple of losses, and Quay Cooper is recalled into the squad. There was a massive news story couple of weeks ago, throughout the entire week, talking about Quade Cooper being in the squad, um, you know, sharing his experience with the team and hopefully getting a start. Well, unfortunately that week, he didn't get to start. So everyone thought that was his journey over. But no, the Wallabies number 10 had a disappointing performance and a disappointing performance before that. And you know, one of the most disappointing things about his performances was the kicking. He kept on missing kicks. So, you know, regardless of whether Quay Cooper was brought into the team for his experience, for his uh, playmaking, or for his kicking, you know, putting him at number 10 was that triple threat. But, you know, whatever the case, bringing Quay Cooper back into the team was only going to be good, in my opinion. So, even throughout the week, I was, you know, talking to a couple of friends of mine back and forth about what they thought, and I've always been a Quay Cooper backer, like I said. So, at the end of the day, I wanted him to play. I've never actually watched a full Wallabies game unless they're playing the All Blacks, in years, it, absolutely years. Probably the last time I did it was in the 2015 or even 2011 World Cup. So to think that I actually sat through a full Wallabies game without the All Blacks being involved, and I watched it with such intent and such joy, just for the simple fact that Quade Cooper was playing, I mean, that, that says to me what kind of influence he had over me. You know, and... And I know I'm not the only one. I know I'm not the only New Zealander who has a real soft spot for Quade Cooper. But the reason we're here today is because of what happened off the field. So Quade Cooper has been in the news recently talking about his Australian citizenship journey, you could say. He'd applied for Australian citizenship four times. He's got a New Zealand passport, but had lived in Australia since 2000 since 2000, I think, at age 13. And I'm pretty sure, now don't quote me on this, but in 2000, there was a crossroads, actually. If you'd arrived in Australia prior to 2000, it was, a, it was just a far easier road to become an Australian citizen. But if you'd arrived after 2000, I'm pretty sure at one point you had to be in the country for 10 years. They've brought that down to three and a half years. But what they've done, but what they've done is they've made a clause that not only do you have to be an Australian permanent resident for three and a half years, you've actually got to stay within Australia for at least the past 12 months prior to applying for citizenship. 
And if you think back, I actually made a video not long ago about how the Australian government cancelled my citizenship application. And it's for that exact reason. It's for the same reasons that Quade Cooper had four applications denied over probably a 10 year period. Is because, yes, he had been a permanent resident for a sufficient amount of time, but because of his occupation of being a professional rugby player, he was always in and out of the country. So whenever he put an application in, the guy plays professional rugby for the Wallabies. He's played 70 te 71 tests now. Yet the government continued to refuse his citizenship application due to the fact he hadn't spent 12 months straight in the country. And, you know, after four applications being denied for that exact reason, being an Australian Wallaby, being considered, you know, one of the best Australian tens to ever play the game. That's in my opinion, not yours. Don't at me. You know, you know, it just seemed wrong. So Quay Cooper actually went public with it. He went public with uh, the fourth application that got denied, which was not that long ago. So that story was still in people's minds, right? And certainly still in some of the Australian politicians' minds, obviously. Now, there's got to be politicians. There's got to be Australian politicians in Parliament that enjoy rugby. And it seems there are. It seems there are. So what's happened is Quay Cooper has gone out and like I said at the start of this video, played one of the most incredible uh, performances in a Wallabies number 10 jersey. Not just for the fact that he kicked the winning goal, um, and not just for the fact that he got 8 of 8 for the game. So if he had to miss one of those kicks, it would never have happened. But for the simple fact that through you know sheer self-belief, uh, through a, a shitload of, of hard work, he worked his way back into the fray, and back into the team after four years away. So it was a comeback story for the ages and for that comeback story to be around a player that I've loved for so many years, I mean, it just couldn't get any better. It could not get any better. So what the Australian government have done in light of recent events, they've actually, I mean, I'm surprised they didn't call this the Quaid Cooper law. In fact, I'm gonna coin it that right now. Alright, so I've got a news story up here. Quay Cooper's citizenship applications were rejected four times because he had spent too much time out of the country playing rugby. Now, my citizenship application got rejected for the same reasons. I'd spent too much time in the last 12 months out of Australia. I wasn't doing it for an exceptional reason. I wasn't playing professional rugby. I was just travelling back to New Zealand. But it's the exact same loophole that both of us fell through. So for those who hated on that video talking about how they cancelled my citizenship. At that time, I didn't even understand. I did not understand that rule. I thought I was a permanent resident. I've left the country for a month at a time, possibly even two months. It didn't matter. To me, I was coming back to Australia. I was still going to be a permanent resident. And I just could not understand that, you know, a so-called holiday for a month out of the country would, 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 would affect it. I just couldn't understand it. But that's what happened to me. And that's what happened to Quay Cooper four times. But I'm happy to say, that as I read, Wallaby star Quay Cooper is among those set to find it easier to gain Australian citizenship, with the federal government tweaking eligibility rules for some visa holders. They made a tweak. Quaid Cooper affected the Australian public so much, and the New Zealand public, everyone was up in arms. It's like whether you're a New Zealander, supporting him because he's from New Zealand, wanting him to be accepted, you know, into the country he spent 20 years in, or whether you're an Australian, thinking, this is fucking wrong. It got sorted. So a tweak was made. You guys are going to like this. So he moved to Australia when he was 13, made his 71st appearance for the Wallabies. However, Cooper has complained that he's been knocked back for Australian citizenship four times because his touring schedule and two years spent playing in Japan meant he had not met residency requirements. And it's the time that I spent in New Zealand that meant that I got knocked back for the same reasons. The current rules dictate that an aspiring Australian citizen cannot be absent from Australia for more than 12 months in the four years prior to lodging the application. On Tuesday morning, Immigration Minister Alex Hawke announced changes for the most talented prospective Australians would be in place in a matter of weeks. So it actually hasn't happened yet. I thought that might be a bit quick. It's still got to get passed, but there is going to be a rule. There is going to be a law, and I quote, In modern living, I think people travel a lot more. Now, this is Australian Immigration Minister Alex Hawke. In modern living, yeah, it's, it's good to know that you're living in modern times, mate. I think people travel a lot more, and people who operate at the high level of sport and international competitions have to be offshore a little bit more than they might have in the past, he said. 
Well, I'm glad you think so. We are relaxing those requirements to take account for that. Cooper said he appreciated the support he had received, but highlighted there were others in the same position. It's not something that is over the line yet, he said. It's great to see that the rule has been amended to make it a little bit easier for us, but the process is still ahead. Until I get that, I'll continue to put my focus on football, but I am truly grateful for the change to the rules. Maybe without playing that game, it may not have been able to come to fruition. And I'd have to agree, and that's why I'm making this news story, because it's incredible. The effect of a single win in the game of rugby changed an Australian law. And that law change, my friends, I'm going to coin right here, right now, the Quade Cooper Law. And you can take that right to the bank. Cooper said that he hoped the change to eligibility rules would provide people with a little glimmer of hope. If it comes to fruition in the next couple of days, weeks or months, there's more to being an Australian citizen than just a piece of paper. It will be a little bit of a cherry on top. And I'll tell you what, guys, the, the, the man is just, you know, whether it's preparing for this game, whether it's performance on the field, or whether it's the way that he's spoken about the whole thing after the game. The man is a beacon of professionalism. The man is a, a champion. He is humble in victory, and he's humble in defeat. No, he hasn't always been that way, but that's what happens. You know, when these guys get thrust into the spotlight, 2011, he was 22, 23 years old, one of the most famous rugby players in the world, and, uh, you know, with the whole weight of a nation on his back. Yet, he was on a New Zealand passport the whole time. So, uh, so I really, I can't imagine being denied Australian citizenship having played professionally for the country. It's just crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And, and actually, you know what the most crazy thing is? He's been to the Olympics representing Australia having never been an Australian citizen. Now, I've got to check that. I'm pretty sure he went to the Olympics with the Australian Rugby Sevens team. Nick Minute. Nope, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Quay Cooper's Olympic dream is over after being cut adrift for failing to make a quick enough transition to Rugby Sevens. That was before the Rio Games. So he didn't make it, but he was in line to make it with the Australian Sevens squad to the 2016 Rio Olympics. And to think <laughs> that would have just been another reason for the Australian government to deny his citizenship application but no more no more and I guess the pathway to become an Australian citizen is open for myself too because I can't see myself spending three and a half years straight in Australia ever again in my entire life but if I ever become an exceptional Australian doing exceptional things around the world Maybe I'll have a hope. For now, I'm pretty good with my New Zealand passport. Uh, the only reason I did want to do Australia is because I've got two kids that live there. I own a house. I'd worked there for 10 years, paid 10 years worth of taxes and thought, you know what? It's about time. Also for the fact that New Zealanders and Australians can have dual passports. So dual citizenship made sense. Unfortunately, wasn't to be. But uh, look, all I can say is, Quaid, enjoy your Australian citizenship. You well and truly deserve it. You are one of, if not the greatest, sidestepper in rugby history and uh, you're still doing it. The sidestep's still there. I saw your first touch on the weekend. Didn't quite go to plan. I saw the wiggle. I saw the wee shake and bake. You palmed him off. You know, if I have to be honest, I'd say your game with your new found mindset has actually, you know, gone up a level. So the time out of the game, the time out of the, the Wallabies jersey certainly didn't do him any harm. If anything, it's brought him back as a, a real leader and we saw that on Sunday night. So guys, thank you for watching. Those are my opinions and my opinions only. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Plenty more videos to come. And uh, peace out, guys. Thanks for watching.